Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Contagion. My name is John Parkinson, and I'm the senior editor. Joining us today is Dr. Richard Becker, who is director of the University of Cincinnati Heart, Lung, and Vascular Institute. Dr. Becker is the principal investigator for a phase two clinical trial studying raziprotatafib phys- <laughs> studying raziprotafib, an investigational therapy for COVID-19 that is going to be studied in patients with moderate to severe cases of respiratory illness caused by COVID-19. Thank you, doctor, for being able to join us today. My pleasure, thank you. Can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing with patients with regards to inflammation due to COVID-19? Yes, you know, it's something that has been re- reported widely, including the very early studies in Wuhan, China, then in Europe and then in the United States, that there is a very high proclivity for this particular virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, to bind onto vascular endothelial cells, invade those cells, and call, cause what is known as endotheliitis. Uh, not common for a virus to do so, but uh, this virus is a little bit different. That degree of inflammation is seen in arteries, veins, and within the moderate size as well as the, the smallest size vessels. Uh, and that is a problem in terms of visceral organ uh, inflammation and dysfunction. Okay, and uh, the investigational therapy we're talking about, how is that gonna be studied as a potential COVID-19 therapy? Yes, uh, Rasoprotifib is a very interesting uh, molecule that will upregulate the expression uh, of a protein that's known as TIE2. It's a tyrosine kinase. And TIE2 is very important in terms of its ability to maintain vascular integrity, vascular health, to uh, make sure that there uh, is an absence of, of leakage, and it also helps in the reparative process. So it's a very, very important protein uh, that is present in normal, healthy vasculature. What has been uh, observed and well documented is in COVID-19, uh, there is a down regulation of type 2, and as a result, vascular integrity is compromised, uh, leakage of vessels is increased, and that leads to an enhanced uh, end organ tissue inflammation, uh, as well as water content that one would see in acute respiratory distress syndrome as one example. Okay, and can you provide an overview of the phase one research on this investigational therapy? Uh, phase, phase one uh, for this particular uh, agent, uh, the uh, resoprotifib, was conducted in patients with diabetes that had macular edema. And in that particular context, um, part of the visual loss that accompanies uh, diabetes is because of vascular leakage. So a lot of the phase one work uh, was done in in patients with macular edema and diabetes. Uh, What was learned in the context of phase one was the drug concentrations uh, that were 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 safe and secondly uh, that with prolonged ex- exposure in some cases 48 weeks of treatment that the drug was well tolerated and beyond seeing benefit in in terms of uh, the retina there were other organs such as the kidney uh, that had uh, beneficial effects as well The trial that we're conducting, and we're one of 20 uh, sites across the United States, is a phase two study that will test several different dosing strategies. We'll be evaluating pharmacokinetics, safety, and some early efficacy markers in in the form of biomarkers of vascular integrity, vascular inflammation, and we'll also use an ordinal scale for individuals to see whether there's a lower likelihood of patients with COVID-19 requiring mechanical ventilation 
re requiring uh, ECMO for circulatory support and other efficacy signals. And as you're getting ready to go into the phase two trial, can you talk about uh, which population, patient population you're gonna be studying and the treatment protocol for it? Yes. These are patients that have moderate to severe COVID-19. Certainly they're sick enough to be admitted to, to hospital. Some of them will be on supplemental uh, oxygen. Uh, others will have a high respiratory uh, rate. And they will be uh, randomized to either uh, placebo or ascending doses of uh, rasuprotifib. Uh, if the, the initial dose is found to be safe uh, and with approval from the Data and Safety Monitoring Committee, we'll then move to a, a higher dose. Uh, after uh, approximately 60 patients are in, enrolled, again, there'll be a review from the Data and Safety Monitoring Committee, and if everything looks, looks good, we'll move into a subsequent phase of 120 patients where pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, safety, and efficacy will be assessed. So a total of 180 patients in this phase two, and if all looks uh, good at that point, it will transition into phase three investigation with a larger patient cohort. And is there anything uh, you're particularly excited or looking forward to as you go into this next phase? We're very excited ab ab about this study for several reasons. The first is it's a targeted therapy. Uh, and that, as I mentioned, is to increase the expression of TIE2. And we know that's critical to maintain uh, vascular integrity and uh, vessel health. The second is that this is uh, a first use uh, of this particular agent in the context of COVID-19. And it, it targets what we consider uh, both the effects of the virus and the effects of the host or the host response. And that is important for us to, to really un understand how we can be as specific as possible in our therapeutics for COVID-19. Uh, we also are excited because this is an agent uh, that can be used early in the course. Um, as I mentioned, it would be for patients with moderate to severe COVID-19, but not patients who are already on vasopressors, patients who have already required mechanical uh, support in terms of ventilation or for circulatory support. So we're hoping that early treatment and stabilization of the vasculature will prevent patients from subsequently developing ARDS, requiring intubation, requiring mechanical support for hypotension, and uh, to use a more generic term, to minimize the likelihood that patients will either develop or succumb to cytokine storm. Yeah, that's a really important point because it seems like when patients progress to that point, their conditions can go, go downhill uh, quite quickly. So you foresee this in terms of clinicians potentially using this as a way to help avoid the cytokine storm? That's right. Uh, it's, a, it's an upstream uh, therapy uh, with the, the intent to minimize the, the effects of cytokine storm, part of which is capillary leak. Uh, and as far as the lungs are concerned, ac acute respiratory distress syndrome. In other organs, it's acute kidney injury, myocardial infarction, and a variety of other end organs that can be influenced by the virus or by a second wave of immune response that manifests itself in, in the form of cytokine storm. Absolutely. And just lastly, doctor, for you, are there any other uh, aspects of the upcoming trial you, you think are important to point out? It's in, important for people to recognize the, the scientific process. In this particular case, we have a, a target that has been recognized in COVID-19 to impair vascular integrity. 
The drug uh, has been developed to go after that specific uh, target. And I think that's important as we move forward in COVID-19 is to say that we will learn a lot about the pathophysiology. We will develop drugs specifically uh, knowing what some impairment, in this particular case, a reduced level of type 2, what that uh, actually uh, represents in terms of the natural history of COVID-19, being specific about that target and also using uh, this particular drug uh, in a complementary fashion. Uh, patients can receive corticosteroids, they can uh, receive renolazine, they can receive convalescent plasma. So this is potentially in addition or if it's far enough upstream, uh, then perhaps uh, other forms of therapy will not be required. So it's a very exciting platform and hopefully will provide some reassurance for not only the medical and scientific communities, but also for the, the lay public to recognize that we're taking a very targeted uh, approach and that a phase two is to make sure that we have a safe, uh, effective and the right dose of a treatment that we hope will make a difference. It's a really good point too about using targeted therapies. I think uh, the public and certainly the medical community is familiar with that in looking at oncology as a whole. So it's interesting that we're already starting to think about targeted therapies for COVID-19 as well. That's right, uh, absolutely. Well, doctor, thank you very much for taking the time to discuss this important uh, topic. It's my pleasure and thank you for having me.